going on, guys? Can you hear me? Do you guys have me on audio? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool, awesome, thanks. Scott is out. Are we thinking Adam might show? Do we know one way or another? I heard from last week. Oops, this comes from Steph here. <laughs> I am a yes. Well, it passes unanimously. Next item, acceptance of the monthly staff reports. Is there a motion? So moved. Very good. Discussion. I was Oh, about the, the open meeting law and all those. We are perfect. Oh, so, yeah. That was a general meeting. I think since the pandemic and people aren't meeting, they're having lots of problems with open meeting rules and people following them. So it was significant that their um, complaints are, are really up. But we are the most frequently occurring violations. We, we don't come close to any of those. So we're in good shape. I was going to ask as well. I know that when I was secretary, I kept the minutes very spare um, and, and um, for us put a little more um, uh, meat on them. But we're prepared to say town council is still have a lot less details. Yeah, when you put the, when you put the minutes with the report, that everything, yeah. okay. all of that is, uh, yeah, all of that is public. And now, of course, it's recorded, so. 
it's on the website. And sometimes I watch it and say, what happened? <laughs> I know the clock starts ticking on when we have to approve the minutes when you adjourn for the summer. But I noticed in the note, um, I, I hadn't seen that before, that it was within three regularly scheduled sessions it has to be approved. It's not a, a fixed time. No, so, it, it's actually really too long of a time for me to be able to stand it. <laughs> yeah, I need days out. Yeah, yeah you, you, get you, you want to get it. Yeah, you want to get that done. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, instructs over the part with the three days, but then it says four within three. Right. So we're close on the elevator. Yeah, we're just about done, except for the inspection. No, and by the time that's great. that inspection, it will be time to the next one. But is this the staff one behind the surface? No, it's the the patrons elevator. Oh, right? yeah, it's the main elevator. Is the staff one fixed? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So right now we have two working elevators. One. Wow. We should have a party. I know. <laughs> In the elevator. <laughs> I think we have one coming up. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll work on my elevator speech. Is uh, the local executive director petition? It is. And it, we posted it today. Uh, is there a salary range? Just curious. Uh, 110 to 140, I think it was. Yeah. That's a big job. Sure That's, yeah, I'm really nervous about that. Um, Ron Gig, 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 Gig has done it for years and years. He's been the executive director. And that's noble. So we're so dependent on yeah. him. That's the catalog, the, um, the ebooks, databases, all of that, training. Tech support, yeah, it's big. That's a huge turnout for Recycling 101. 50 people came out for that. With the Sustainability Committee. Just looking at the February program numbers. How many people came out? A lot. 50? Oh, yeah. Seems like a. Is it online or here? No, it was here. Yeah. Um, and I, I actually got an email afterwards from Burlington wanting to. Replicate the program, and I just directed them to the sustainability committee. But we're got around, I guess. Right. Well, because they've done, was it them or the DPW who does the, you've had the rain barrels here mm -hmm. in the past. Are you doing that this year? Um, we haven't this year. And I know they have some, they've advertised them on the town website. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't notice one upstairs. Usually there's one. Right the yeah, maybe they don't come here anymore because they get, they, do well right at town hall. Oh, I should ask him about that though. What are you feeling about in person events overall in terms of like, I don't know if we've looked at pre and post March 2020 numbers, not that it's a comparison, but I, I, I'm just asking you because other things like professionally and other volunteer things I'm doing, I feel like they're still, in-person is still lagging. A little bit. I have the sense, and I don't, I don't know this for a fact, I have the sense that it's not that people are afraid anymore, it's just that their routines have changed. Um, because we get, we, we're getting- The numbers are still fine, so the same. Yeah. Yeah, some things will be a little higher, and but not enough to say, oh, look, there's more, but there's less. It's always been kind of a crapshoot. This is just what other people have going on, I think. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It's not so much fear, it's just patterns have changed, you know, how people are living. And it's good to know that they're not, it's not a, I, didn't, I, didn't, I asked this question without having the past to see if it was a big dip, and I didn't have a thing here with the suspicion that there was, but I was just kind of curious. Right. We probably won't see patterns for a while. And even then, you can't trust them. 
really, you, you, you know, it's, you think you'll have a, you think you'll have something that a lot of people like, but that maybe won't last or there'll be something the new trending. So that's the trick, I think, is to find what that trending thing is that people would be interested in. So what is a cybersecurity assessment? Is that that right? Or was it a review? Or is, did, did someone did, come in and Noble. consult with you all? Noble had one. Noble. Noble did it. So everything, they moved to the cloud. Yep. So every, all, of, all of how that works now, that was all investigated by a consultant. Okay. Um, so that they could spot where there were any weaknesses and they've updated all kinds of things. So that's become a priority. And sure. at the last meeting, um, Ron said that the weakest link in the chain is human. Then there's nothing you can do about well, that, but it's going to be somebody's going to click on something. That, that, that's where you want it to be because uh, that means you've done, like you say, you've done everything else you can yeah, do. Right. Other comments, questions, concerns? Hearing none, we'll go to a vote on the motion. Uh, Susan? Yes. Amy? Yes. Lauren? Chris? Yes. Jackie? Yes. Paul? Yes. Um, yes. This is unanimously. Um, moving on to public participation. I see none. Uh, correspondence. Uh, it was a nice note from a patron. I always appreciate that. Um, many reports uh, budget. I think last night the Capital Planning Committee met, and I think that they were going to decide on what they were going to recommend, but the meeting isn't posted yet. Um, so I'm going to look at that and see if I can get a heads up as to whether or not we got a roof. That's sort of what we're waiting for. Were there two things you were asking for? Yes, yes. And the roof and um, IT, some computer stuff, um, which is less important, um, mostly because we have funds that could cover that if yeah. we had to, but we'll see what happens. We did ask for both. What's the cost estimate for the roof? 130 was it? Something like that. So, 25 and 130. Yeah. Or is that to redo it completely or is that patching? That's no, it's that's a brand new. It's to redo it. Yeah. And apparently it's the whole thing. That's what they said at Capital Planning. It's the whole thing. Okay. Um, sounds like a lot. I was going to say that sounds like a good deal. I yeah. Know. It's half kind of, of what we estimated. Yeah. I was good. Yeah. I was thinking all day long. It's more than that. Right. He, they, we have a new. Vendor, so they so they put it out to bid. For, they put it out to bid for the whole town, mm -hmm. and so all of those estimates were substantially better because yeah. they have to do the civic the civic center roof was on there too, and they got a good price for that too. Just the vendors, you know, I you had to say it. Um, weather shield. Do they get both roofs with that bid or? More? At, at the meeting, they said both. I have the estimate, and I am not clear. Dave said he thought it does not include the new part because the old part actually has two levels. So he thinks it's the two levels of the older part. And I can't tell. There's a measurement there. So if I can figure out the measurement, I would know. So, but, but the most important part will be done. That was the part. Right, so, so that's the, what we put in. So it's not the entire building. It's the original section and not the addition. Except at the Capital Planning Committee, Joe Conway said it was the whole thing. Interesting. Yeah. So I need to verify. Hopefully the vendor knows that. What's the I'm trying to get some excitement for that price. Do you have any idea what the service impact is on a new route? Like just leverage closed for? No, you know, I don't know. Yeah. You know, does I think it might not be anything. Because they, yeah. they did they did the um, post office and everybody was still working. Unless there's crane work involved, I think they can keep working. Yeah. Just when they take it off, they, they don't throw anything. Yeah, they don't want to throw anything. Let's think. 
because they, they they did that actually they yeah they hit Dave's truck he was not a happy camper. <laughs> Um, we'll wait anxiously for the news there. I know. We're going to wait 90 days if then it's minutes for 90 days. <laughs> I, I was wrong. It's 30 days or three meetings. And I come with that. Even 30 three days is something that in, in some, um, you know, the town meetings, you kind of want to keep up with if it's a building or whatever. Right. It's a long, it's still a long time. They can have it half up by then. So that's a good segue into um, building and grounds. Obviously, the roof is front of mind, but um, as well, the steps? We'll, Those we'll should keep be, an eye on the steps. And the the steps should be done this next. month, within either next week or the week after, because they were going to do it around the 15th, but we had the white ribbon thing, so we put it off. We, uh, Jackie and I, ran outside Ellis Cage. Okay? Uh, he did actually recall as he was standing there that he had been there before and hadn't quite come up with a plan. And we, we chatted a little bit about you know, some of the signs around, including the one at the church that um, is getting <clears throat> mixed reviews from the general public, apparently. Um, but I will chat a little bit about that when we chat about friends. Are we talking about the sign, like the outdoor marquee sign? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Talking about electronic scrolling, maybe black and white. The thing that Tim has been had been working on yes. for years. So oh. which which church has this new sign? Like that? I always get it wrong. The Stone Church. How's that? Oh, okay. No, that's they have an electronic version yeah, already. Looks real nice. Right? Right. Uh, I thought it was great. Uh, was some other comments were not as good, but um, I thought it was a fabulous sign. Mean, Keep grab a picture for some. Let me get through my strengths to the pictures first. Uh -huh. Well, Chris is <laughs> looking at it. Did, did you talk about redoing the signage inside too? Like the I'm still room? doing that. Okay. Um, I found somebody who I think can replicate those book shaped yeah. signs, and and I signed off on it. I saw what it looked like, and he's supposed to be bringing it in. He said he was he was going to hand deliver it, but I haven't heard from him. So yeah, that was years ago. That was two weeks ago, I think. Yeah. So that's still coming. Yeah, meanwhile, if you're looking for large print, all the signs are wrong. I, the thing that's interesting is nobody notices. Yeah, I don't know that I've ever looked at one of those signs. Honestly, if I'm looking for something in the library, I've just asked someone. Right, nobody, nobody really looks at it. And that's electronic scrolling, colored, different format. And, and that, that's actually with the sun on it. We talked just a bit about the, just the, the impact of the, the sun. Like the top white part is not where it says first no, parish. That's not right. That's, 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 that's a It's bad. It's nice about it. It has the stone on the side. Yeah. yeah. And then, then the. It's framed nicely. He didn't do that, did he? No. Because he did a lot. on. He has done a lot on Main Street. I didn't realize he goes about. Yeah. And he also actually donated uh, pretty much the veterans fields that they put on the corner. Oh, yeah. yeah, obviously, that's a hard plastic or a hard form to sign if you were looking for something that <clears throat> talked about. You know, you can control it. Somebody vacuums there. You can, somebody in the building can control what's going on from their phone, not with an app. So, we talked a little bit about power, and there's an outlet near that. I thought you meant who has the power to control the app. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> So yes, um, I think it's wired already. I think there's a light in there. That's what I was trying. To yeah, they, I think I that picture it had a board that you put the little letters in, and, then, and I think like there was a, a light yeah. over it. Yeah. yeah, so I think there there is wiring. So there. He, he's going to kind of price it out um, if he has to. Someone has to dig a trench and get there. But I, I think, as we said, there's power in that. Yeah. So um, it might need to be something different, and we just say. Uh, Wi-Fi, correct. Which and, and the Wi-Fi goes out there, so that's already set. So we wouldn't have to wire it for the yeah. that. Yeah, right. So you can control it, set up, and do some fun things with it, as long as you don't get hacked. 
Right. We have wonderful cybersecurity, so we won't. <laughs> <laughs> so we have one of those fun sign wars with the church, you know, where they like, send messages back and forth. Did he do a mess time? He did not. Do you recall coming on a kind of time frame? No. I think that will be more or less of me rattling his cage. Again, yeah. hey, did you get that for me yet? Um, I'm not going to buy your next round of golf if you don't get it to me soon. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's not an easy, I, yeah. I think it's hard to find. That's why, because everyone I've talked to about it has taken a long time. And then they've given me something that you really, I, you, if something goes wrong with it, who are you gonna go to? You know, you've got to get your own, all these other people. They're just gonna give you the hardware, that's all, and walk away. And I haven't wanted to do that. Well, so, you know, the, the what rolls into that next sometimes is you want to give him some recognition somewhere around the sign if we can work on the price point, or is that something the town can't do? I think that's up to you. So it's up to the trustees. I, you know, probably depending on the funds and how, um, how good the friends are to, to buy things and do things for us, um, maybe that is something that we can get a discount on if there's some kind of recognition revolving that. But let's get some price points first. And, and yeah, see yeah. recognition for the friends or recognition for sort of the sign. For the, for the sign maker. The first. No, I don't know. I did not reach out to him. But I know. I can find out, I bet. Actually, I was going to do that before. Curious. Yeah. I know good to have that would have a quote, but also that might speed things along too. Yeah. yeah. I priced them before Tim started looking. I asked around for libraries who did it. And most of the libraries who had done it are libraries that are affiliated with other town buildings. So, so like multiple buildings are using the same sign and it went anywhere from 10,000 to 45. And when I looked at them, I couldn't figure out what the difference was. Like, why is this one 45 and this one 10? I think it goes to the definition. They're actually pixels or whatever, however you phrase yeah. that. So, sometimes it does, yeah. Sometimes that's... It'll be interesting to see what he has to come up with. Yeah, yeah, that's something yeah. like the stonework, or you know, around it. Yeah, they have to do all that. that. I think. Yeah, and they have to build out for uh, for, for power to get that out. That's that's an expense. When they did it, I'm sure impacts it too. And the cost of a lot of that those screens will come down quite a bit. Right. But yeah, I will remind him. Next week, that he owes us. On to friends. Oh, and I won the friends meeting this time. <laughs> and, and I had not been to as many friends meetings as, as I had thought. Um, uh, oh, it, it covered a lot of their um, book sale stuff and, and the facility and trying to find a new location and water leaking from the ceiling and the humidifiers and stuff like that. And then we actually talked about. We kind of circled back um, <clears throat> after a loop uh, to the sign stuff, and they, they were not um, fans of the sign at the Stone Church. It was too bright. It was just too gaudy. It was just too, too, too. Um, so I kind of assured them that we're probably going to be a little more classy, for lack of a better phrase, than that. But um, the the most interesting thing at the friends meeting. Um, <laughs> choose words wisely was um I, I think I think they forgot their role uh, as to um who their friends are and I'm more than happy to have you chirp in but um you know we proposed to the friends or Catherine proposed to the friends that they pick up the forty five thousand dollars for finishing out the archive, you know, the, the daily item archive on our site. And um, 
Now that that came after their budget discussion about what do they do with their ninety five one thousand dollars because they were beginning to strategize. We've got to get more interest on this money. And we've got to find a way to put this away and and kind of grow this money. And I think they forgot that they're the friends of the library. And in essence, they're raising all this money, but not giving it to the facility. Uh, I think the, the time period was they had three years in reserves for their kind of budget and their annual expenses. Uh, and they basically flat out shot down. Although it says tabled in their minutes, they basically shot down the $45,000 request uh, that Catherine made, which kind of rolled into, I think I asked them what their mission statement was. Because I kind of thought their mission statement was to support this facility. So um, they went so far as to, aside from questioning the digitization, you know, almost wanting to vet why we did it and how we did it. And they wanted a, a report as to why we did this and why they should support it. And I, I was just surprised. Yeah, I, I was surprised too. So I was sort of agreeing to everything because I was taken aback. And, and what I should have said and didn't, and I think maybe the same thing happened to you, um, is that the, it's this body that makes those decisions. And once those decisions are made, as advocates of the library, they would, they would back it up. They do have a history of picking and choosing, and that comes from wanting to protect their fundraising from things like carpet. So we don't want their funds to replace what the town should be paying for. Um, so at one point, um, Cindy, who is a former trustee, said that she thought the, that digitization should be paid for by the town because it's a material, but it's not really. It, it is a material, but we're paying for the platform and it's above and beyond what we would be able to have. And every other library who's do, doing it is paying it with, with foundation money or gift money. I mean, that's how it's been done. So when I realized afterwards what she was saying, she said, you have trust funds for that. So then when I went home, I realized what she's saying is I can use that. I can. I can do the archive with the trust fund money and they can put their money in a CD and earn interest on it. But our trust fund money is earning interest. That's the whole point of it. So if there's other money, we shouldn't be touching the trust funds. So it just got a little, yeah. It just got a little, I mean, to their point, there are plenty of places where we could get the money from. Like we have. We have pockets of state aid and yes, trust yes, do. Right. But, that's, but that's not the point. That, that's all, yeah. The point is they're that's sitting on three point. times. The point is they're they the friends of the e library, which is why I circled back to you. What's your mission statement? And it's, you know, I understand they like to pick and choose what they fund. And it's kind of been easy to do that. I don't know how many times we've actually made specific requests to them to fund something, an individual item or, or something like that. Or do they kind of just, this is what we do, we do this, we do this, we do this. I mean, how many times have we said to them, hey, this is what we want? Usually, when you did the business center, you asked for that specifically, right? And that was, that was not, <laughs> <laughs> that that was not easy. It looks so nice. If it, so what they typically fund are programs and museum tasks. And when it goes beyond that, which is what I wanted to do, because that will attract um, more members if they see something kind of flashy, you know. Um, so when we suggest something outside those things that they're used to, they want to vet those things. And I think at some point, and I don't know if it was this body or if it was the friends, but there's a chat that comes from another library 
um, group, and it might be in Connecticut or whatever. And it's what everybody's role is. Like, this is what the director does. This is what the trustees do. This is what the friends do. And we all kind of have to stay in our lane because that's how everything gets done. Um, and I had a professor in grad school who um, specifically was hired to go to broken libraries. And he said, every time a library is broken, it's because the people didn't know what their role was. Um, so I think that's kind of what's happening here is right. that it's not a matter of ill will so much. No. But it's just not knowing what the role is. But we would never take it upon us to, to tell you what books to carry or not carry. Right? That's not our role. That's your role. Right. Like, I mean. Right. Yeah, Actually, right. So, but it's your responsibility. Right. So, I understand so you, you are in charge of me in, in that case. So if if I have a question or if there's something that that is a little different from regular, I would have to bring that to the body. If there's anything that was we were going to do that a member of the public would come to you, that's when I would bring it because it's ultimately your responsibility. So you'd want to know. Um, but you've charged me with that. So that's sort of how it. You know, that's why we have the chart and we look at who does what. But I also said the film card had to pitch a good of a product or, or, or undertaking this is to them. So I, I didn't think we should have to be in there selling things that we've fully vetted and the town has vetted. I understand, you know, $45,000 was a, a large amount of money. Um, and there was also some conversation, well, maybe we should give you 10 or some of that. And it kind of just settled with they were going to table that. And yeah. uh, I don't know what kind of backdoor conversations will take place. But do you know if there's a thing in um, going back to say my PTO years on in our um, whatever you call it, the bylaws? There's a cap on how much money. So, like at the end of every school year, the PTO can only have That's fifteen thousand dollars max. Anything above me on that has to be spent on the kids. Like you have to start spending at the end of the year if you have the do they have a limit? I don't, I don't think they have that. They have bylaws, but I don't think that there's that, a limit. That's something I was curious about too, because first of all, it's it, it's very disappointing because I've heard more people comment on how great this website is that have grown up in Wakefield or want to know about Wakefield, it's just you you put a name, a date, or whatever, and you get all kinds of information. It's not going through film. It's it's what I mean, that's what people do. The whole ancestry thing and all that is so popular now. And, and we do that here. We do the ancestry thing. So I'm, I'm very disappointed because I haven't, I mean, sometimes people say, well, I read trustees, what do they do? I've particularly heard how wonderful this is. And I only moved here in '86, so I'm very concerned with having the rest of it done. Personal, our stuff is, um, stuff yeah. is there. Um, so there's that, and I was going to ask the same thing. I, I and I've been involved in a lot of nonprofits, Blossoms being one of them. I think the people who, the, their membership, the people who donate that year um, to any like a PTO, a, a nonprofit, the business ones I used to be in. Um, it seems like you owe it to them, to the people that are currently involved to do the best for them. Right. And to have that many years ahead seems um, unnecessary and kind of, I, I don't know, I'm not, and they have a lot of money maybe because of the pandemic. Is that the reason? Yeah. So yeah. you want to draw people back. We were just saying sometimes, you know, are the events as popular as they used to be because our people are isolated or not thinking of going out and do things? Something, anything that you can give back to them seems seems like an awesome thing. So I, I can't wait till it is funded by someone. I don't see anything. I took a copy of their bylaws from the last meeting that says anything about their funds. Yeah, I think the only thing it says there is that in the event they fold, yeah, it all goes, it, yeah, it all goes to the libraries. I would think that it, the more they're sitting on, the fewer donations they're going to get. I am not going to donate to a charity who's sitting on a big old amount of money. 
personally, like, right. if, you know, it, but if you're spending it and like, that's a really cool project. I mean, I've talked to people too about this digitization thing. People were asking about it with the um, high school vote where, you know, oh, I wish we could save all these letters to the editor that were right. for the vote. And I chimed in and was like, actually, it's being done. It's, it's going to happen. You'll be able to research it. Um, and everyone is really excited. They don't know that this project is necessarily happening yet, but it's such a great flashy thing for the friends to put their name on. I don't know. Yeah, the, yeah, like, maybe that's the idea. And that was one of the pitches. Yeah. You know, again, I hate to say I'm never going to pitch something at a friends meeting, but that was one of the pitches I made to them for membership drive. You know, it'd be great to have a marquee item like that, that you can point in your membership drive. Hey, we just did this. They also didn't think it was that good of a thing. They do I'm just thinking, like at Wakefield 101, if I go up to the table and say, "Well, what do you do? What you know? What is my membership getting? What are you providing?" and the answer is museum passes. <laughs> I, I pitched how wonderful it would be and for I love them to be able to say, you know, we helped fund this. This is, you know, come join us because this is a wonderful thing. Look at what we did." And that didn't get any you know, when I went either. to the meeting before, and I said that you know they were talking about membership isn't that down. And I was like, well, I think you need to self-promote because until I was really involved, I didn't know how much they did um, or what kinds of things they funded. So they, it, they're they actually, you know, they're a wonderful organization. They do wonderful things. Um, right, but great. I'm not sure people that are becoming members or not becoming members even know that there's that much Are they fully to... staffed right now? Fully, I think so. They have a full board, right? They don't have a they vice president. Are they down though. one person? Did we, in our last meeting, Captain, you made this really great point about even with our funds, our trust funds, we're in a good situation and there's that balance between saving for the future, but also spending money now for the current patrons. And I feel like that's the situation there. And it's like, what are, what is, do they have some big vision for what they want to do? I think that's all a lot of money. Like, do they have a vision of what they want to do and, in the next three to five years? Part of, the, part of the reason they were saving that money, and I encouraged them to save some money, is because the book sale didn't have a home anymore. And I thought, you know, it takes money to make money. So if they had a little something set aside for an opportunity, either a, a big um, new, uh, membership push or, you know, something, but it's been a couple of years and it's, it's, that's not really what's happening and they're growing more money. And I, I thought, well, now's a good time to use it because this is a really good project. Um, and you can put it on the website. And, but I, I, we, just didn't sell, we just didn't sell the project. I think part of it was that I didn't know people wouldn't get it. Like people don't see the value of it at all. And, and since we've had it, I keep finding things. Like I went to a WAVE meeting um, the library was one of the founding members of WAVE, and the, the couple who started it, I was talking to him at the White Ribbon thing, and they're doing, uh, they're putting together a scrapbook, and he said something like, do you remember, do you remember, and I thought, this is, that's exactly, you put WAVE in, you're going to get every article that was ever published on it's that, so it's great, and it's so fast, it's so good. I mean, put together a little bit documented some of like the feedback that we're getting, some of the testimonies we're getting from patrons. But do we have any of that in writing that we can like put together on a to share with them before the next meeting? No, but, the but, patron impact? But, this, but this was the other thing because Jackie got in touch with the MBLC because there's somebody there who specializes in this kind of thing, how how everyone stays in the lane. And and she sent you an exact um sentence I think that was really good. But it, it it's not it's not really our role to sell it. We we do we do a strategic plan. We know where we're going. We know what it is that we want to do. Um, I feel like I already I already do a lot of selling to you. I do a lot of selling to the staff. You know, I, I'm I can't do a business plan for the friends. I shouldn't be expected to do that. Um, yeah, what was the sentence? Well, the Friends Board may have their own opinions about the strategic goals of the library and operation leave those decisions live with the library director. Yeah, as, as supported by the library strategic plan and approved by the Board of Trustees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's how it's worked. They are their own 
entity. I mean, you nobody here, trustees or director or assistant director, can turn their hand in this way. Like it's it's up to them. They either do it or they don't. But nobody oversees them technically. Right. right. But they can only give their money to the library. Right. They only answer to their. So it's there, but they are, yeah, yeah, to develop. Yeah. There is recourse, but it's like we're never, we're not there. <laughs> yeah. No, no, yeah, no. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, like they don't have to listen to us. They don't have to listen to Catherine. If they don't, if they choose and vote not to do something, then no. I think what Maura said to me was that if that became a pattern, you, there's some recourse to say legally, like, okay, well, you can't raise money in our name anymore if you're not gonna, if you're gonna repeatedly refuse our request. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't think no. I think it's. Disappointing that they seem disinterested at this point in, in the project. But, um, my Laura, your, your idea of how to convince them is, uh, I think, a good one. If the director does not work for the friends, yeah. is, is the bottom line. The friends shouldn't be, it's the equivalent of tasking the director to come up with, with a report and additional, additional material. Um, Which is exactly what they did. If, well, exactly. Yeah, that, that, that's what it sounds like. Uh, and um, again, that, that, that's unfortunate. If they're not interested, uh, I, I personally appreciate an up or down vote from them. The answer is no, we'll move on. Yeah. Um, but, um, but yeah, I mean, the I, I was thinking along, I, I've, I've agreed with, with basically everything that, that's been said. I mean, if, there, you, if you're sitting on a ton of money, this is not uh, an endowment. This is this is money that has been donated to them with the with the thought that this is going to go directly to to the library again. I do. I, I appreciate the idea of not paying for carpet. I, I specifically would never want to go to them. Um, I wouldn't want them to have to turn around and, and tell someone who donated money, "Thank you, you kept the lights on in the trustees' room for 15 minutes on on the 4th of June." Um, that's that's not what their money is for. So. Their ability to push back, I, I respect, but at the same time, this is, a, this is a, a great project. It takes a core function of any library, archival, and it makes it accessible to everyone. Right? These are just pieces of paper collecting dust somewhere, unless you come into the library. It's not even paper anymore, right? They're, they're microfilm. Um, when's the last time someone used a piece of microfilm in this building? Pretty frequent, actually. <laughs> frequent, but it's because you don't have an article. That's the only choice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fair enough. So, but it's so I, I'm, I'm, I'm it's properly chastened on on my panel. <laughs> right. But um, yeah. So anyone can do this from home, 24 hours a day. Not even from home. Wherever they are. But it's so, a little stuck. I mean, we we've, 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 we've turned the archive into a living resource. Um, it seems like a great idea to keep going. Um, Trustees have approved it. We'll figure out a way to pay for it, one way or the other. It's certainly not. Um, I think Cindy knows that it's not the role of the friends to yeah. um, to point out to the trustees what money we have on, on, on hand. Uh, I'm sure that was just an offhand comment from her. Um, so, so yeah. I mean, to me, the, the the path is to go back to them, say, you know, anecdotally, we uh, we we have gotten good feedback. Trustees have approved it. And the library is looking for help paying for it. If you'd like to help, wonderful. If not, thank you for your time. Yeah. I mean, I think it's going to be wildly popular. And once more people know about it, it's, it's going to be such a huge, amazing resource that the community is going to love that I would want my name on it. But it's there. a wonderful driver to the site. Yeah. Once it gets out there, she's now. You mentioned the um, accessibility component of it. Um, I don't know if we're looking for other folks to help uh, offset that cost, but is there like a, I don't know all the organizations in town, but is there like an accessibility group? I'm not saying that anybody would have the full $45,000, but. Yeah. It's one of the other line items we have was blossoms coming. That might be something that you know, can chat with blossoms, but very well. Where's the blossoms money going to go? Because when I when I 
mentioned it to the friends. I, in the back of my mind, I was thinking that I was stepping on Chris's toes because I knew when he was going around looking for sponsors for blossoms, one of the things he would be able to say was, we're doing this, you know, this archive and you, you, you can have your name on the archive. So uh, right now it says that it's, it's a, a partnership. Uh, that's all that it says on it, that it's a partnership. And if you look at Reddings, I think they have a little more detail because they are foundation funded theirs. Um, Melrose just started one as well. Um, so, it, I mean, maybe it's gonna be Blossom's people will, will be, be part of the partnership. Um, you know, it, at this point, it is a partnership between us and the daily item because they're going to give us permission to the, to the rest of them. Just need to pay for it. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm not super concerned about paying for it. I feel like we're, we're sitting on our own funds in various ways. That, yeah. True. Know, yeah, we, yeah. We, said, we said we're yes we're to them an opportunity we're to do a very cool project. Right? Yeah. If they're not taking that opportunity, Fine, yeah. I, I'm not, yeah, I'm absolutely yeah. not looking to shirk responsibility yeah, for a decision right. we made. Absolutely not. It's just like like you said, Catherine. It's a matter of roles and responsibilities. Yeah, and I and we knew when we did it that we had the money to do it all, and we, there's no commitment to do it yeah. at all. Yeah. If I so, if I didn't think we had the money, worst case scenario, in our possession, I, I wouldn't. I would not have been right. in favor of it. But um, I mean, I. I thought we did. I, I, I was in favor of it. And it, it came out even better than I thought it was going to be, to be honest with you. I thought, I thought it was going to be a little clunky. It's, it's terrific. Yeah. It, well, I think in this case, you get what you pay for because, you know, Jackie did a lot of research on some of the others and we tried them and they were okay. But, and you know, if it takes you a long time to put it in and if you keep doing it, you want the state of the art now. You don't want to start with something that's already. Yeah. So, I'll yeah. tell you, I, I, well, I agree with that, that we, we're definitely going to do it, and we, I hope we do it soon, because I can't wait to try from 86 on. Um, <laughs> but the thing that, not, I just, not only am I disappointed that it just, you know, because it could be in an instant, we're going to do this. Also, we're two groups that are working for the same thing, and I just see that a lot in politics and country and everything, and not coming together for the same thing. Like where we go to their meetings, they've come to our meetings, they, you know, we should be working together. And that's disappointing just personally to me that, that that's kind of not happening. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, but I think that it, it's not recognized as being that. I don't think people are seeing their lanes. And but that's what I'm saying. Yeah. We're, we're not, that's the problem. Just speaking from town wide, look at how many different people do the kinds of the same things. We're so many small groups. And there's always, there's been talk as long as I've been here volunteering is that, well, why can't we kind of come together? It's all for the town. Here's only just two groups for one purpose. Um, so just personally, I'm disappointed. So it has nothing to do with anything, but. Is there other things you would ask the friends for? For summer reading, I mean, yeah. other above and beyond what they usually fund because you didn't. You said at the last meeting you didn't take money from them during the pandemic, so they so, kind of owe us, right, for a few years. Well, it, it's been accumulating, so this, yeah, yeah, so there's things that we can be spending money on. So um, I just think if they don't like this project, do we have another big one? Yeah. Oh, do we? Are you asking? Not as big as this. Are you asking for the the forty five thousand? In addition to the summer reading program and the museum passage and all that, so it's not like forty thousand yeah. for this year. It's right, but they already gave us money for at the beginning at of the, the year, beginning right? of the year. So it's really just the um, the summer reading program, and they've got a book sale coming up. Right, so that's the other thing. Right. It's, it's ninety five k plus. Two months from now, they they get their big windfall. Market. Windfall is in, inappropriate. They 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 hustle. They work. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. They it's not yeah. just money. Out of Which, no by money. the way, the book yeah. drop is a Saturday, yes. and the sign up genius is empty. Usually, there are some trustees around here. I did sign up. I had to unsign up an hour ago, not because of this discussion. First, uh, I had it as this. Yeah. Shoot, maybe I'll be signing back up again. All right. Well, either way, I was on the sign up genius at like six p.m. and it was empty. So yeah. they need volunteers. But yeah, they, they, they work hard for that money, but it is their, their big fundraising event of the year. So it's, 
it's whatever money they have on hand plus what do they when do they bring in 30. for the book sale yeah oh, last year it was 11 11 14 was i think the highest i'd ever seen oh so you might get 30 the because if they add in the everyday book sale from the things that they sell here that's oh, your other that's usually and they about that they about the smaller sales but that's usually like around 200 dollars a month just from just from that should i can do that <laughs> yeah i was excited but also also i'm not going to tell them how to, how to spend the money just here's one idea yes or no please are those meetings in person now on the trustee next yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, next month because yeah. uh, i think kind of going to jeff's point about like yes or no make a decision is that there is a tendency for some of the same topics to, to spread out over many months there and you sort of need a decision right? I mean, even if it's a no just yeah. right, right as opposed to tabling it and okay. yeah i don't want to like one and it would be nice to know yeah. where we are and kind of solidify what our relationship is going to look like um, going down the road and yes or no and i'm going to guess um, whoever wins the next one it will be uh, a portion of that will get funded yeah that's what if, i think they were if, leaning to it if i had a guess how that was going to play out Perfect. we said the next do, do you want to if you want to fund the forty-five thousand dollars for the for the archive, they're going to say no. But how about if we give you ten, fifteen? Uh, that's what I think. Yeah, yeah that doesn't get your name. <laughs> yeah. No, but um, the way the naming rights. Yeah, uh, yeah. like, like I'd also, I'd also be curious what their you know annual reserve is over the course of the last decade. Well, I mean, I was on the friends board for a couple of years. Um, you know, Melissa was president and I've been around their budget for several years and it was always a pretty much rolling peak at about 30, 35,000 at the high, you know, right after the book sale. And then it would, at a low, I think it probably always got to like that 10 to 15 range after you know, yeah. paying everything. But it was never really outside they, that. They, yeah, they need, we need money for the taxes. Yeah. And we don't want to drain them. They, yeah, yeah, they have certain things that they have yeah. to do. But, but there's no reason to be saying And I think they were going to look what their expenses were so that they knew exactly yeah. what they needed to sure. set aside and what, they, and, and what now, was expendable. I feel like they've now got a CPA on the board, a retired CPA. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I'm going to guess he's going to kind of look through that and give them a feel for what, where, what they can be or are. Yeah, what I think there's a funds. couple. There's a couple of people on the board now who have those skills counting skills so that's helpful do we need to revisit the mou <laughs> or is that ship sailed yeah, yeah. <laughs> that i think that ship it, sailed I think sunk. That, yeah i think that ship sailed and i think it was sort of like this is all the same ball of wax the, mm. the the way that they couldn't understand why why you would do that is the same way that i'm not being clear about the different lanes because that's what the MOU did is identify those lanes. Yeah. We're done. <laughs> um, give funds. First Financial Trust is coming next month. Um, it couldn't come this month. So it's going to be in April. But everything is everything's fine that I can see. Let me just explain some of things, answer are questions. Are you still collecting ideas for um I spend the uh, yeah, nobody sent me any ideas. I have right. I have a whole spreadsheet. Well, we were supposed to bring them tonight. Yeah. Well, you can. Did you bring some? I did. Oh, I, well, I, I asked around, I asked friends who come to the library. I said you could you know put your wish list for the library if there was some excess funds. But they were kind of small asks, like some people That's um, actually good. Okay. Some people wanted it's to ask time. about um, expanding the library of things. Which actually came up in a the Melrose, one of the Melrose Facebook pages on Melrose Moms or Melrose community page. They have 
some local business downtown has kind of started a library of things, which people, it's just not advertised. So people found out about it this week in a Facebook discussion. And everyone is so excited they could borrow, you know, a tool or an auger or whatever. Um, and I think at one point it was a issue of space, right? For, yeah, for us it's space. Yeah, that's, and that's, that was my response is because I, I mean, I looked at the library of things this morning to see what was in it still, and it's all very small things. Well, small things. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Like binoculars and yeah. Roku's. Pulele might be the biggest thing that's in there. Yeah. But if it was, you know, it, like we um, at Holiday Travel last week, we had a, a hog sink. I don't own a snake. Sand doesn't own a snake. Um, you know, Plumber Games snaked it and clogged the sink. We're thinking like, oh, like that would be a library of things. It How often do you and then, but you them? also have to think when that comes back, who's going to clean it? Oh, right. You don't want to use someone else's. No, but, but like, a, I have one. you know, a miter saw, or I don't know, like those sort of things that you only need once for a I know. Yeah. yeah. If you look, you know, who has a good one is Reading. A so they have thing. things like a, a label maker. How often do you need that? Yeah. You know, and those are um, sometimes they really have neat. parts that you have to worry about the parts. Mm -hmm. um, but we do look at, you know, somebody wanted a uh, sewing machine. It's just, it's too big. So not for a big gift fund thing, but just as a random thought of things that the library of things could use. Um, people are always asking me to borrow my converters for international travel. So, mm -hmm. you know, you can buy them on Amazon for like five or 10 bucks each, the international yeah, one. They're small and people only need them for like a trip once to live in. Reading has those. <laughs> <laughs> then we should have them too. <laughs> That's a bird song um, identifier. There is stuff I saw. Um, now I'm thinking about this like, for like Girl Scouts. There are like these Girl Scout sets that the libraries have in places that have, they're small. They're just like little yeah. kits that Girl Scouts can borrow. Um, and then another friend talked about like a teen space, I guess. I know there's the Boys and Girls Club. Not a lot of kids want to go to it if they're not members there. Um, speaking as the parent of an eighth grader, that you know, once they hit fifth grade in Galvin, these kids all have freedom and walkability of the downtown area. And I'm sure you guys are well aware that the middle schoolers come here, um, at least mine has for four years. But like, is there a great little homework space that they can hang out in? I mean, I know there's the youth room and the couch yeah. next to it, but but it's too close to the desk. They right. don't like it because it's too close to the desk. And that's the thing is you don't want something I, completely. Yeah, we because, had a, um, as middle schoolers. We had a consultant from Boston Public Library come in. And she worked with AC and she gave us some ideas, but none of them really work because if you're a teenager, you just want to be alone. So we had talked a little bit about setting aside the, this room on, on certain days where they, and you, you'd have stuff available for them to do um, because they, they, the room has cameras in it, but they could still be alone. Um, not somebody over their shoulder and you could set some, they could game in here or whatever. Yeah. Um, but it can't be a permanent space. We don't have any place that's permanent other than what's right next to the desk and they don't want to be next to the desk. What about the, what about the glass room? The kids crafts? Is that, that too it, young? It never really worked and I think it's because of the glass. I think it's because you can see in there. Oh, yeah. fishbowl. It's a little bit so, of a so they don't. And I think they feel like it's a little kid's space. It was a homework center for a brief period of time. Um, it didn't really work for that. And they, the staff uses it for storage. So they started doing programs in there again. Too. They did. Yeah. Yeah. They weren't for a long time because of COVID. They were trying to you know, spread everybody out. But I, they're back in there for certain things. Yeah. It seems like yeah. waste for storage stuff. Yeah. Sure well, if they can put it in the, in. People can still use the room while they're storing stuff in there. This this storage spaces. And somebody requested a cooler, bigger bike rack. I don't even know what a bike rack looks like. Actually. Oh, yeah. Several people have asked for a better bike rack. Is there such thing as an uncool bike rack? No, ours is pretty cool. I saw actually. one recently. Where was I? And it was two bicycles. It was like the, an outline of two bicycles side by side, and you could hook onto that. Um, I never. It's a fairly great. It's so it kind of like somewhere around here. Yeah. It's like public art. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's right out here. Bike yeah, bike. I'm gonna have to look because I'm parked right there tonight, and I never, I don't ride a bike, so I've never paid attention to the bike rack. Yeah, but, um, it's that there. was one of the ideas, and it's not filled. I mean, it's not this. It's not like 
people don't have space, mm -hmm. so it doesn't necessarily have to but be any cool? bigger. I think it's cool. I think it's cool. Well, that's but, you know, <laughs> what, what's cool, right? <laughs> uh, but hey, those are my ideas. This is a long I wrote one. them all down. Quite along the, the teen space, I mean, but this might be beyond the scope of, of this discussion. But I'm thinking about how you know people are work has changed, social things have changed a little bit. And we have library as large meeting space like this, and then individual like desk carols. Is there any and again? I mean, maybe no request for this, but if you're like two or three people that want to gather, don't maybe a study group or something, but like we don't have any. You know, Staples is starting to offer yeah, these. Yeah. You know, like no, no, you're just, absolutely right. <laughs> I'm thinking along on the third floor too, like along some walls for there. We could. I mean, there's a construction project. You'd have to pour things off, but just having a couple. Of spaces. I just kind of figure out exactly how to do it. The the closest we're getting to it is if DVDs go. Is a you know where the DVDs are? Yes, the, the thing in the center holds CDs, and the CDs are just about gone. So once that's gone, we would have that space, and that would be easy to retrofit. From what I understand, just about every day somebody asks for a private room to make a phone call, have a Zoom call, or work with people, or meet with people. And I try I tried to figure out how we could use maybe the trustees room for that. But people come in and immediately need it. They don't want to sign up for it. They don't, they're looking for space and they need it. And I think they're used to finding that other places. I don't know where. But we don't have it. And they and at reference, they say just about every day somebody's right, looking this is, for that. I feel so like you're not hard. gonna like this idea, but <laughs> I'll preface with saying you won't like this. But in this room. Um, from working my years in like country clubs and event spaces and whatnot, you know, you can get like partitions that fold out pocket door type things that would like divide this along those beams into three mini rooms where you could still put a, a six foot table or an eight foot table or something. Yeah. Is that anything you would ever? We could, but I'd want, I'd want a professional to say how to do it. Well, right. Because the thing about it is that this room in and of us, this is the biggest room we have. And it's not that big. And as soon as you put, I mean, already the chairs are, yeah. and and the the piano and the lectern have already enclosed it. So now you don't have the space that you thought you had before. So once you put dividers in, you'll get those smaller spaces. But how much of the big space will you lose? Because when you open those, those are going to come out from the wall a little bit. And even when they're closed, they're going to. Be out as far as the stacks of yeah. chairs. Yeah, and they may replace those chairs, so the chairs would have to be moved someplace else. It would just have to. It would require yeah. somebody with more skill than I have. Um, it might be a possibility. I mean, it's it's the only one big room, right? Unless there's someplace else in the building that could do that. It is something we think about all the time. Where could we get the private space? And you don't want to spend a lot of money doing it because I don't know how long that's going to be necessary. I mean, I think I don't, I'm one of those guys I've never asked, but I think about it all the time and I'm bringing my kids here for programs and I could just, instead of going to my car and jumping on a Zoom call, I can do it here. Like, and my, my life's never going back to the way it was before. But because, because it's such a need, I'm wondering if it's like a whole separate building that you need for that. Like the ACE building, is that what they should do upstairs? Or should we try to buy the building next door? They get rid of all of it. They send all of you, the postal service to Uber. Maybe we can buy that building. Is there a little room that the French Club meets in? Used to be the digital media lab now. The digital media lab was like the little closet on that end. No, What's yeah. that? the closet is, was the, where we used to, it's the friend's closet. If it's it's truly a closet. You couldn't. Um, I mean, I guess you could technically. But the friend's <laughs> office. Yeah. So man, like, there's a like somebody. Um, we used to do reception in there at one point on a desk yeah. for some reason. We used to do reception in there. We used yeah. to have the phone in there. Yeah, that's what I. Was and thinking. that's where the jazz equipment is stored. There's a lot of units. Is there a place we could buy a storage unit and put it 
like behind the library because it sounds like storage is a huge so issue. Where would, but where would we put it? I don't know because I haven't been behind the library. Oh, you've got to go behind. <laughs> we'll take a tour. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's tight. I did it the snow once. That was a big mistake. Yeah, you lose the space when it snows. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've still never been on the roof. So, one of these days, it's not my roof. I was going to say, wait till it's fixed. You want to go before they fix it. We won't be walking on a nice new roof. We won't walk around on the old one. Well, I think. Yeah, the way you say the like the DVD space that might be an option for something in the future. Go, I, I just there's more things you know, digital. Doesn't look it doesn't free up a ton of space, but I think we'll be thinking just in general how to reuse or the purpose of those spaces. Repurpose which space? The, yeah, but like the, the DVD uh, space or right. others. You know, like like you did with the magazine for a little bit. Like it's. Right. The but it's being used for other things right. too. So I was really happy with that from upstairs that you could do so many more things there. And I do notice lots of people who will go there and, and work together. But as soon as we got that, it, it was like we moved on to the next thing and everybody wanted a private home. Everybody wants an enclosed space that no one can hear them. Then you run the risk of people just camp out there for. Well, if you don't have a, if you don't have enough of them, see that's another problem. You have to just have one, because if you have one, that it, it's not serving the purpose. It's almost it's worse. You're teasing people yeah, with yeah. it. Um, so we kind of have to find a way that this something flexible. That, I don't know. I there's some old phone booths. Somewhere. I don't know if this is um, something that you could consider with the room thing, but like. When I used to be overseas, what they would do is like you would have a room, like they had kind of the private rooms for, you know, phone calls, email, whatever, but they'd have like a time limit on them just for a throughput. So you couldn't do that. Would that be something that, like, if we could facilitate a space, it's like, hey, like you could go, you know, sign it out for, you know, 60 or 90 right. minutes or something like that. Right. And then that is an option. Mitigate some of those, some of those issues that you, that, are being discussed. Yeah, it, it might. The problem that I hear from the reference staff, though, is that most people who come in, they're here and they want a private space immediately. They don't want to sign up. It, it might be that when they come, we give them a space immediately and say you can only have it for an hour, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, that's how it like used to work. Like you come in and be like, hey, this this room's available. You can go here for X amount of time. You know what I mean? But then that way it kind of keeps uh, the throughput. Keeps know. it moving, right? Yeah. Right. Even if we just called it a, a phone booth or something, so you can take a call and not disturb the library or whatever. You for, you know, like actually. Calls, like, yeah, yeah. Like staples, I was at a Staples recently where they have it is actually a phone booth. They have like three of them in a row. Um, we sit to it, sit find a link to it, and you can make a phone call. But also, there's a little table you can put your computer there, and it's you know, it seems like you can take it is a couple of the workstations upstairs, the wooden, the the carols, yeah, carols, yeah, and just build it out. Like a carpentry thing and make it like a little close to the glass door behind you, like Dr. Wu. Yeah, like in, a, but you know, like in a hotel lobby when they have like the, the lineup of phone booths, but there's always a couple that you can just like go in, sit down, oh, close door. Get smart, cone of silence. Yeah, yeah. 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 I want something more futuristic, like yeah. something pod like. But, yeah, but with the desk that you know, you can put your, yeah. Uh, yeah. your laptop on. Yeah, you can buy them separately. It's a problem. We'll have to look into that. So that's on my wish list for fun. All right, anything else? No lack of things to spend money on. Oh, never. Um, okay, legislative advocacy. I, I confess I've been uh, asleep on this since uh, Governor Healy took over. I, I, I don't know where she stands on libraries and, and where we are in the, in the uh, cycle. She seems to be a fan. And um, 
everything it's good. I think it's now gone back to the legislature. Her her budget um, met all of our requirements. Right. And I think that we have it with it. The only thing was the the center for the book was level funded, but everything else she gave um, either what they wanted or more. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what will happen when they go out of committee. I guess there's something, um, there's an ebook thing that a couple of legislators are working on. I think there's 12 of them that have signed on to it. With the pricing? Uh, yeah, yeah that in Massachusetts, if you're gonna do business, you're gonna have to be priced fairly or something. Yeah. I, I'm not clear on how it would work. And there's only 12 people signed up on it. Um, and there's something nationally, but I'm not sure what that is. Uh, there's there's a lot of national problems because um, they're fighting on books. They're, yeah. they're yeah. This the, the states are trying are starting to solve it piecemeal, which is much much more expensive for the industry than if they just yeah. come up with a yeah. halfway decent solution themselves. So I'm, I'm not surprised that they're engaged, but uh, yeah. someone's got to yeah. give hundred dollars for uh, you know five five checkouts of a book or something like that. In some cases, it's uh, some of the numbers are wild. And the publishers are suing the Internet Archive for putting books on the Internet Archive. So depending on how that case goes, that will change things too. What I read, I'm sure, was, was, was biased in, in, a, in a certain way, but uh, it sounds like they're, uh, they're making so much money that they're having a difficult time proving damages. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see. Yeah, they'll have to work on something that's not related to how much they make it. Okay, well, um, did, was there, a, um, was there a, a legislative day? It was recently? virtual, and then there was one, and it was on the day, the snow day. That's right. That's right. So we didn't go in. I went online, went to the online. All right. Um, and we should be looking ahead to we now in the next meeting in terms of trustee support, either on a state level or um, possibly. And, and yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I just keep I'll send, yeah. I'll send if I see anything. I'll send it. Right. Personnel. It's quiet these days with personnel. We will want a personnel committee meeting um, before the end of the year. Um, Jackie's contract has been settled and some contracts have been settled in town. So before, if we meet before the end of the year, it allows us to plan before I build the budget for 25. So, um, so do you mean who's on that? Just the committee, the well, so. July first, still before uh, before end of December. Um, what, do you, what year are you? We should probably meet like in June. Okay, okay. so before so fiscal year, fiscal year. Before, that's yeah, asking. because because yeah. then in September, that's when I'll be right. Building it, yeah. There's no subcommittee be advised. Um, all right, new business, uh, friends book sale contract. You included a copy of this, Catherine, in the packet, is that correct? Yes, and he has the original for side. So that goes to the um, town council. I always want to say selectmen. That goes to the town council um, because we give our weeded books to the friends and they're agreeing to give us back the money and they sell them. <laughs> do they sign this also? Yes, they do. Interesting. And, and they signed it first. So they sign it, we sign it, then it goes to the town council. And they get and the then they can have the sale. Too. Then they can have the sale. Just just me. Have it. Just you. Second. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right, the anniversary open house. We have soon. 
So that's the 15th. I don't really know that we have any news, but you're all invited. It was a lovely invitation. Wasn't that beautiful? Yeah, that's a replica of the original invitation that was sent. Yeah, that you know, Jackie, Megan, so who's on that committee? It, all of this has nothing to do with me. Was I supposed to get an invitation? Oh yeah, you think you didn't get it? Something so a month ago. Probably a month ago. It's been away. I get my mail still. <laughs> <laughs> my husband is still here. We'll check this bag again. Like a small little yeah. like a like wedding window. invitation. Uh, I was just gonna say look yeah. back through yeah. like the recycling. I was happy it wasn't. Mail has had some issues lately around yeah. here too. Yeah. So. It was a while ago though. Yeah, it was so a good. Yeah. It was, it was a yeah. good month, I would say. Yeah. If I've opened it, it was probably any time in the last six months. So, <laughs> way to narrow it down. For me. <laughs> You'll get the uh, everyone in town is getting a postcard, and that's hopefully next week. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Yeah. He's on one day. It's on one day. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that will go to every house a um, an invitation, so everyone will know. And. Um, I don't know who will come from the town. It's it's an open house, so. And what's the time? Period? It's all day, all but day. The, but there'll be someone wonderful speaking at eleven. Marie, <laughs> it's you. It's you. <laughs> I know we'll be speaking. I don't know if that's who you're referring to. Oh yeah, at eleven. Oh, we should all be here at eleven. Yeah. Get a photo. Yeah, yeah, we should. I know. Yep. I know. It only sitting sitting once in a hundred years. We're not going to see it again. That's right. You do the picture on the fourteenth. It's the first day of spring break. Oh yeah, it's right. yeah, it is. It is. Okay, uh, so that um, that kicks off our hundredth anniversary celebration, and we wrap it up with uh, blossoms, which is the next item on our agenda. And I don't know if you have anything. Well, since we, you know, we're plugging along. Chris is doing a fabulous job with um, sponsorship. We need forty-five thousand dollars, though. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Any interest in rain, we're probably not going to get there. Yeah. <laughs> um, we we have donations under forty-five thousand um, dollars. We're doing really well we're, this year. I think I talked about where it's really computerized, and we used a system called One Cause that Amy was nice enough to um, create for us that opportunity years ago when we almost had a blossoms yep. and so now it's active and it is going to be a complete godsend oh, yeah. it um, does the tickets it does the auction no more going into the auction room and signing you can do right online it will alert you when you've been on bid um, so it's, it's as long as people are into the computer thing which I know before in the past with the population of blossoms, we thought a lot about making anything too complicated, especially with computers. But um, so this is the real test. But in the first three days, three, four days of tickets being live, it, it, we sold 100 tickets, which there are past years who were saying, well, you're going to make it to 250, you're going to make it to 250. It also um, does not burden the staff here with having to do a lot of the, the stuff that Jeff used to do, the individual stuff, which, which takes out of their day, which is always, I mean, it's such a blessing that we have this location to have this event for the chamber and for um, the library is because this is very unique. But in the you know past years, I think it's gotten less burden on, on the um, library, but it, it, it's still, there are a few people that spend a lot of that last week Absolutely. just doing this. So, I mean, this is really, it has helped with that. Um, the other shining factor is, is Megan has completely taken over understanding the one cause, which is not in my, you know, job description. So I'm glad she has, and she has 12 volunteers. I assume they're mostly from the library that are completely trained on everything. So whereas we used to need 50 volunteers, we really don't, I don't think we need volunteers. Um, the auction committee has a complete list. And so does um, whatever you call that in its check-in, it's also going to do um, 
you know, drink tickets, auction items. Uh, I don't, I've only seen the front page, but it, it's amazing. It's well worth the investment. Abs absolutely. Um, if one were interested in tickets to the event, could one go to the Blossoms website? Yes. Find a link? Yes. yes. <laughs> and it's actually, you know, when there's posters we have around um, with QR codes. I mean, like, this is really high top stuff. That we never I apologize for not bringing some. I know, I know, I should have too. Um, but so if you can sign up for your tickets there, there are no physical tickets, you'll get alerts on that. Um, as auction items come up, they'll be posted there. You cannot bid on them until that night, um, but you'll be able to start seeing them. You can buy drink tickets for a low price or a high price, depending <laughs> on when you bought the ticket. But that's another story. <laughs> So we, you know, the, the only really snags we're having right now is getting a caterer, getting food, and getting alcohol completed. Not that those aren't the two most important things, but um, we're, we're still kind of in a snag about that. There are no caterers or restaurants that were really willing to, everyone is short staff, it's a Saturday night. Nobody seems to need or want the promotion that we used to give, even though we raised the price a little bit to give them. Um, for, so we have a, a somewhat idea about something, but if anyone has any caterers, they know that would be willing to do something like that. There's still time. Um, so there's that. And I think the alcohol is hopefully on its way. Yeah in a more um, brand name situation than it has been in the past where people have gone before and weren't happy with the, the quality of some of the brands we had. Trying to work our way up the shelves. Yeah. You know, yeah. a higher product. That's and obviously that is a request of the people that have done a lot of the work on the Boston's committee. So we need that. Um, so, so that's really it. So it's the 29th. Um, there is no limit right now, but I know we have well over 100 tickets sold, but you can do it right now and, and be done. And you will get your bidder number and all that stuff that had to be um, addressed. And even if you if you buy drink tickets, I understand when you come to check in that you're there, um, you'll be able to be handed to them. So that will also save lines when, you know, there was always that backup. So keep fingers crossed if uh, hopefully because i think there's going to be a lot of people here and i'm hoping it's a nice day <laughs> you'll, you'll be able to repurchase additional drinks yes not that i'm encouraging anyone to uh over and buy but uh get those auction numbers on <laughs> it's about we're looking for we're looking for forty five thousand dollars. So <laughs> I would say with the app, like you can be at the bar, get yeah. your last drink, yeah. at last call, and still be bidding on the auction. Yeah, you yeah. don't have to all be crowded into the. Yeah, yeah, I, I believe the site tells you once you sign up for an item that you've been on bid. Yeah, it would be uh, almost delinquent of them not to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it, do that same end if you come up with some things to do during the evening right on your phone you can contribute more money yeah um, i'm just going to ask you jackie how was your training from megan thorough and, 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 and how, how do you feel like the general public is going to do when they walk in and need to buy a ticket or, or be it's fine the the the, the patron the kind of person on the way yeah but, friends, but, but the kind of outside facing side of it is very straightforward and the the back end of it i think once once she and i megan and i realized that it can do a lot more than we need it to do and you just sort of have to read through yeah. what, yes. what you actually need it's fairly intuitive i just i, I didn't have too much trouble with it and i think it will be fine for yeah. whoever in the moment needs it i'm still technically an admin on there it's very user friendly it's very, and i'm yeah. not a techie person but it yeah. was like i was able to Pre-COVID, set up a few auction items, do some tickets, and it was yeah, it's pretty straightforward. It's, yeah, and I think that you know, like having being able to purchase some tickets ahead of time. To the problems have always been like clumps of, of crowds that you want to disperse. I mean, when they when people would hang around the auction, not really bidding on the auction, it kind of you know it's hard for that because people can't see it, um, and then again getting that person getting that last bid in and having, that was very difficult to do. 
the fact that they can close it down online, they can alert you online, and you can go and see it once. You can go through and really look, and then just keep doing it. And then it charges your card right then at 10 o'clock. So you can go pick up your item at 10 o'clock. Right. And not have to wait around for the trustees room stapling fiasco. Chasing folks around for, for weeks. Right. Like right. Giant yeah. port of firewood that it's you're trying to get. You know, uh, it is awesome. So it involves live flowers. So it's nice to be able to like close out those nine to twelve bouquets that night. Absolutely. Here you go. Take your flowers. They will really go. And yeah. you are right. When there was items left over, because people just left early, but now people, leave. even if you need to leave early, you can still buy them on. <laughs> right. Um, so that's good. But also that was a. Very difficult for the library staff because sometimes everything would go, and other times they'd have 15 items still in September of the following year. And that was that's not fair. That this is should be a one one night event and, and have it ended for the library staff. I'm glad you brought that up again. Um, because just converting to this is almost like a donation back to the library in itself. So you're you're freeing up uh, staff to do to do what they're paid to do. Right, right. And that, that's the search public. So I, I, it sounds like a win already. Right. Speaking of all the time and stuff for the staff, um, I know I texted um, Susan about this earlier this week, but I'm getting questions from friends about there's not a lot of clarity with the theme because, like, from the, yeah, it's, it's Jubilee, it's 100 years, but look, people are like, what are you wearing? What do I, what's the costume this year? Is it a mask? Is it a cowboy hat? It, it is funny hearing that from people you talk to that they are looking for some kind of dress up. Yeah, because it, it sort of has been. Years it, it, it has been. And I guess, you know, the, the answer will be, you know, how do you celebrate 100 years? Well, what would you like to wear if you were celebrating 100 years? Would you be really upscale? Would you pick a decade that you wanted to dress to? Would you be wandering around like 1920? So uh, I guess the, the answer becomes, how would you celebrate the 100th anniversary? What do you want to wear? So in fairness, we've come up with a lot of themes. And we're, we're kind of running out. And we need fresh blood <laughs> on the blossoms because we've, a lot of it's been done. We don't have a lot of new ideas. And plus the idea of, um, you know, we don't, it's almost like this is a new event because all of the other things that we could have relied on in years past may or may not work. You know, we're, we're doing things so much differently. People are different. Um, what people want to go to or not it could be different. So it's kind of a little gamble like that. And I was afraid to add something more specific into the mix. Um, so next year, so we need a kick ass theme for next year. So start thinking now. Um, but that, that's the real reason. So I would say celebrate. You're celebrating being back together in an event of this kind and um, celebrating the library. So some people started spreading the rumor that it was going to be 1920s, which I kind of did once a long time ago, and that I don't fit into that dress anymore, so we're not doing it. So celebrate. How would you celebrate? If you want to celebrate the 70s, you want to celebrate? Yeah, how would you celebrate right. 100 years? Well, Chris has I a nice tale with tales that I, yes. you know, I haven't seen in a couple of years. So. Yeah. He all, well, he will come up with something for awesome. for celebration. Just one more point on sponsors, just so you guys are aware. Um, the Savings Bank annually gives us $5,000 for the event. We've done that again. Um, the Cooperative Bank gave us $2,500 again. Um, a company called Hogsbrook Management manages uh, Hunter property and also manages Edgewater Office Park, gave us $2,500 again. Subaru gave us $1,000 again. First Financial gave us $1,000 again. Um, so, you know, there's some really solid community sponsors. I mean, Matt Maggiore also made a donation. I haven't seen a check yet. Um, but so it's nice to see the community support. And I will say uh, um, all of those, almost all of those people that he mentioned, when we were almost at a Blossoms a few years ago, um, they had donated that's those same amounts and did not ask for the donations back since the event. So really they are double sponsors. So the Savings Bank really has donated $10,000 to this particular event. And 
which is which which we're very grateful for because honestly the the cost of running the event even though we're very try to be very careful and frugal is significantly more than it was as everyone knows from everything they every time they go in the store so this what we'll study for the proper bank gave 2500 so a, a number of those sponsors didn't take money back from our last event that was canceled so on the recognition marquee, Savings Bank will be a ten thousand dollars sponsor. The co-op will be a five thousand dollars sponsor. FFT and Subaru will be twenty five hundred dollars sponsors. So that that's been a blessing. So I mean, we didn't we didn't have to worry too much about the startup. And we're definitely not worrying about people um, actually attending. Just the, the food and the alcohol. I'm worried about it. <laughs> you know, I didn't realize that there was such a shortage of caterers until I was talking to Ali yesterday about it. Please go. Now that I think about it around town, there's not much. No. Not a caterers right now. All well, the food businesses are really hurt during the pandemic. Order pizza from Lisa's and call it a day. Oh, That's going to be the gourmet on germs that we promised on the. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't mention um, in the VIP room for for the bigger sponsors. There's a reception from six to seven, and we have a very popular person do, uh, doing that. Channel Five's Doug Mean. He lives in Linfield, and he's. Um, He's very popular. So a lot of people are trying to get into the VIP room. So if you want to donate a thousand dollars, you'll so, be there with bells on, yes, with sir. some more of the gourmet hors d'oeuvres served to you personally. <laughs> so that's it. The only volunteer situation we have right now is helping with the food and the helping with the food, if anyone's interested in that and you do get a free ticket because you only work half of the event. And that's really, Helping with however the food goes out, should there be food. And we this year we would like people looking I like walking around stations. Um, because one of the things that we've noticed is that well, people put a drink down, napkin down, whatever. And it after a while it doesn't look so nice on the nice decorations. So you kind of maybe we're gonna have some people um during the event take a half hour and, and do that in a certain area. So hopefully I'll be there. And I can't wait to see what you all wear. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever fits in my closet. <laughs> and then we'll guess your theme. <laughs> <laughs> so April's gonna be busy. Yeah, sounds good. Um, yeah. Oh, no, items not reasonably anticipated by the chair. I have yeah. none. I have one. I had emailed when I was collecting signatures a couple weeks ago. I ran into Sandy Brown from the public health department. Oh, right, right, right. And um, we we're chatting a bit from the post office, and she had asked about posting out like vaccine clinic at the library. So it, it, I, I don't know, know if there's any I follow. haven't connected with her okay. yet. Uh, and I don't know if they're still doing it. I th this was a few weeks ago and she said it. So I, I thought too, like, it, it maybe it could be something for future. Yeah, the future. Yeah. Um, she was just suggesting that it might be an opportunity to attract folks that they don't get in other spots where they do these free vaccine clinics. So. I just thought it was worth having the truck. Somebody else wants a private room. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 I know. The program. Room. If you go to CBS where they have the vaccines in the corner, they just have this white folding yeah. screens. Maybe that's what we can put in this room. Buy a bunch of screens, call them cubbies. Rent some money out. I don't know. Yeah. Anything else? All right, I think so. 
Um, reaching the end of the agenda, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Moved. Second. Okay. So let's go around the uh, the room. Susan. Yes. Amy. Yes. Laura. Yes. Chris. Yes. Jackie. Yes. Paul. Yes, from Idaho. <laughs> and I, I'm, I guess, uh, unanimous. We are ended at, uh, use the same clock, 836. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Good, Good to time. see you, Paul. Hi, Good to Paul. See you guys too. I'll see you guys in a, hopefully in a couple of weeks for um, on the 15th. All right, great. Safe travels. All right, take it easy. Last minute.